Welcome to Beyond Limits, empowering coaches and entrepreneurs. I'm Steve Remmert. And I'm Odile Remmert. Get ready for a podcast that challenges everything you thought you knew. We're the founders of the Remmert Method, ready to shake up your mindset. Break through doubts, fears, and limiting beliefs and ignite your true potential. Join us for inspiring conversations and strategies you won't hear anywhere else. This is Beyond Limits, empowering coaches and entrepreneurs. Subscribe now and get ready to redefine what's possible. Today's conversation and the tips we'd like to share with you are about... Fear of what other people will think. Yes. (laughs) I think the reason I'm so passionate about this particular subject Mm, is mm -hmm. that there are people out there, there are coaches and entrepreneurs out there who are in all kinds of fields who have solutions to world problems, who know that what they have could help other people and they're passionate about it. And you may be one of them, but the self-doubt, procrastination, overwhelm, Mm. problems with timing, you know, not having enough time. There's all kinds of these hurdles or or blocks that hold a person back from sharing their gifts with the world. And, you know, thinking of that end result of how many lives could be transformed if you, like us, were able to overcome and get past the unconscious blocks that are holding you back. Yeah. You know, I know for myself that I've had the experience as I've been able to overcome those blocks for me that were preventing me from stepping out, you know, stepping into the stage, stepping into the arena, whatever analogy you have for that. You know, I know that in the work that we've done, the work that I've done individually with Mm -hmm. clients, I've been able to have that kind of an impact. I think for me, a memory that really kind of hits home for me was it was a call where I was dealing with somebody who was really, really in a significantly bad way. You know, I'm a little leery of using the S word. You know what I'm saying? But that on the the verge verge of checking out. And Mm -hmm. I know that because of the conversation that we, you know, that we had afterwards, that it had that impact of making a shift, that somebody was able to refocus enough that they didn't go through with, go yes, through yes. with that. And I know for me, it's like, okay, if none of the other work that I've done has had any kind of an impact, it had an impact. That's powerful. You know, yeah. and, that, and that to me was like all of the work in overcoming the fear to put yourself out there was worth it. It saved a life. It, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely in the moment. Yeah. And I know that there are so many other people out there because I've been working with them. Yeah, I've yeah. been working with them and I know that there are so many people out there that don't get to the place mm-hmm. of actually sharing yes. what they have because of the fear that is there. Yeah. And what we know, what we know is that that fear is an unconscious. Well, what I want to say as mm. well, you know, there's a difficult thing between logic and feelings. And our feelings are not always logical. They're absolutely valid, but they're not always logical. So what I mean by that mm. is fearing what someone else may think is mm. sometimes logical. There's good reason for it. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you are worried about doing something that you know will impact your job, like you you could get fired or you may Mm -hmm. not get a job Mm -hmm. that you're applying for or, you know, some other kind of real life consequence of taking whatever that action is. So putting yourself out there, meaning that if someone thinks badly of me, I'm going to actually there's going to be real life consequences. I'm going to lose my job. I'm not going to get my job. People are going to leave me or whatever. So when it's real. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. on the other hand, I would say the majority of us who are worried about what someone else will think of what we want to do or putting ourselves out there, sharing what we have with the world that we know would help people. 
it's not logical. In other words, and I know we had this conversation as well, you know, so let's say mm -hmm. you do share what you have. So let's say you, you post on social media or you do a YouTube video or a reel or whatever. So you start to share what you have, your gifts that could help others so much. Let's say that it's true that people are going to judge you. There's no actual danger to that, right? When I first started thinking about doing YouTube videos, I had very specific people in mind that I was sure was going to, were going to see my videos mm -hmm. and judge me. <laughs> and I had, you know, just, I knew that these people were going to think all kinds of things of me. So mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. answers to that. The first is, Number one, people probably won't think what you think they'll think. <laughs> right? oh, that, and number, that's a mouthful. And number two, even if they do, if you think about logically, what's the consequence of that? So what, what's going to happen? They're going to think that and then. <laughs> and when you mm -hmm. kind of look at it that way, it doesn't necessarily take the fear away because the fear is coming from unconscious references yeah, as we know absolutely so yeah. so the purpose of questioning it in the first place is to recognize that what you're feeling is not necessarily reality so the fear is like i'm gonna die but the reality is if someone thinks something that's okay it doesn't really have as i say unless it's you're going to get fired or something so that's that piece and the other piece i want to say is Number one, thinking about the end result. So in our case, there's a future doctor that wouldn't exist mm. if we hadn't got over our fear of promoting and sharing what we have. Mm -hmm. So asking yourself, whose life would not be affected if you don't get past that, number one. Then number two, also understanding that all negative emotions, as we know, are caused by stress chemicals like adrenaline and cortisol. And those stress chemicals, apart from other effects on the body, cause blood to drain from the prefrontal cortex of the brain where we do our cognitive thinking. So it means that the more you think about how worried you are, what others will think, and you buy into that fear, the more you're taking your cognitive thinking offline and the harder it is to reason and to think, okay, how realistic is this? And the more difficult it is to become creative. And then when you do go, if you're mm -hmm. trying to force yourself to share, you're not being your authentic self and you're not able to be creative because you don't have that part of your brain online. So getting into the state of feeling good first. So that's the second piece. And then the third piece, of course, is the unconscious references which is where the fear is coming from originally, the fear of what others may think. There's good reason for it, but it's not from now. It's unconscious. Mm -hmm. And we do have a free webinar that goes into the details of that, what those unconscious blocks are, that the original cause of those fears, and what you need to do to change those blocks the way we did. I was uh, reminded, you know, as you were talking there, that that notion of when you can kind of take a step back and recognize that it doesn't make logical sense. Yes. You know, the, the fear of what somebody is thinking is it is not actually going to change anything. It's not putting you in immediate danger. Right. Exactly. Right. It, it feels like that, you know, the effect of the neurochemicals are so convincing, you know, yeah. that that feeling of fear, uh, that feeling of panic, that feeling of dread, whatever the word is that that describes what it is that we're feeling in the moment is so real that it becomes it. It, it certainly was for me. Yes, it was. It was a paralyzing, paralyzing fear sitting on the the end of the couch and not being able to move forward. And I know that the underlying fear for me, you know, a, a large part of that is what are they going to what think? What are they going to think? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, talking about how strong that fear is, we know, okay, logically my life is not in danger, but the reason that fear is so strong and it feels like what other people think, so other people judging me, the reason it feels so bad, so yeah. intense, is because the same chemicals that are produced when our lives are in danger 
are produced when we're feeling any any negative emotion so when we think about so and so is going to judge me so you know talking about myself when when i thought of doing youtube videos in the beginning yeah and i was thinking you know these people would come into my and bless their hearts they probably would never think that but <laughs> i was sure that these people are going to judge mm -hmm. and as i thought about them judging me my brain and body were producing the same stress chemicals like adrenaline and cortisol that would be produced if my life was in danger and that's why it feels so intense and i think one of the important things to bear in mind is that there's a divide between the conscious mind and the unconscious part of the brain and that divide is what makes it so difficult to remember mm -hmm. and to register that it's not real one of the best examples of that is when you're watching a scary movie you know it's just a movie your conscious mind knows it's just a movie but your brain and body are behaving as if you're in real danger so you know whatever would happen if you were in that situation that's happening in your body and the only thing stopping you from running screaming into the street is that your conscious mind knows it's just a movie that's what happens except that when it's in the situation of what will people think we tend to buy into it the conscious mind tends to buy into it so the difference between you know when we're watching a scary movie we'll go oh well it's just a movie but when it's what will people think of me the conscious mind goes yes what will they think of me and oh no they you know i don't know what i'm doing and they'll think i'm bragging and who am i to you know nobody mm -hmm. wants to hear whatever and and then the momentum just gets going yeah yeah and then when we're operating out of that place of fear when we're operating with that program running in the background then it's impacting it's impacting our our decision making it's impacting everything that we're doing yeah, our judgment you know that our the Risk way that assessment. we're looking at all of the conditions in our life we're now seeing that through that filter of fear yes and yes. obvious solutions the correct solution i don't know if there is such a effective. thing effective, effective solutions yeah. are evading us because we're now looking through that that filter of fear right. so we're making decisions and i know in my my own case you know it's like i'm making decisions based on this ir irrational fear that's right. there i'm not taking action that needs to be done in order to move forward to mm -hmm. succeed to help somebody because i'm essentially afraid and i know in my case i'm afraid of what somebody who died in 1985 will think <laughs> about me right in doing the work that we've done i've been able to go back and look at those unconscious references, references yeah. that are back there that were holding me stuck yeah it was like oh my god i'm afraid of what somebody in my past is right. going to say right. you know that that critical voice that mm -hmm. that you know that person that we're trying to uh, impress or try to uh, appease or whatever whatever that is but it was like it was a wake-up call for me yeah. you know yeah. one of the things that I want to suggest is when you think of doing the thing you know you need to do so uh, you know you want to share what you have with the world let's say for example start by thinking of the end result why do you want to do this thing Mm -hmm. whose life is going to be changed because mm -hmm. of it so going back to your original inspiration or idea for doing what you're doing so whether you coaching helping people overcome certain things or an entrepreneur for a certain type of business whatever that is go to the end result that you originally created pin the fear for now so go or come back to the fear we're not actually going to take any action right now just revisit your original reasons for doing it Goal. number one yeah yeah your original passion yeah, really. yeah number two ask yourself what if you don't do this thing what mm. if no one knows about it so not what will happen to you what will happen to them mm -hmm. if you don't do what you do that's that's the the key there mm -hmm. then thirdly 
get into a feel good state. So do whatever it takes to get into a feel good state, listening to music you love. And again, pin the rest, go, I'll come back to the things I have to mm-hmm. do. But for now, what you're doing is bringing that cognitive thinking part of your brain back online, because the way to bring your cognitive thinking back online is to get into a state of feeling good. Doesn't matter what you do to get there, as long as you are then feeling good, because then you're lowering the stress chemicals in your system, producing feel good chemicals that bring blood back to that part of your brain. So some examples are do some physical exercise. That's really good. And Mm -hmm. and you probably Mm -hmm. won't feel like doing it. (laughs) Do it anyway. (laughs) It will work. Or taking a walk, listening to an audiobook or a podcast that you mm-hmm. enjoy. Mm-hmm. Listen to music you love, do an activity you love. Understanding that you're doing those things for a very tangible biological specific reason, yeah. Biological mm-hmm. reason. You're bringing blood back to the cognitive thinking part of your brain and then you will come back to everything else. So that's the third piece and You'll want to get into that feel good state before you take the action, because then you'll have fun with it. You won't be making yourself do it and you'll be less nervous. Turn the nervousness into excitement as well, Mm -hmm. because similar kind of state. It's just your conscious mind is thinking I'm frightened or I'm excited. So there's the meaning to it. And then the fourth thing is changing the original unconscious references in your brain so that you don't have those fears in the first place. So changing the original root of those fears. And for that, of course, we have the free webinar, which the link will be in the description of this video. That will take you Mm -hmm. through exactly what Mm -hmm. those references are and how to change them and all of that. And as you were talking, I was reminded of, you know, one of those other more cognitive or conscious brain type of things. And I, and I know that in my not so distant past, you know, as I was working on getting over these fears of putting myself out there or moving forward, I was having this conversation with a really good friend of mine. I'm going to share this with you because if nothing else, if you remember this story, one of those kind of friends in my life who is able to kind of speak clear words kind of harshly sometimes, (laughs) and, you know, just held it out to me, you know, I was expressing you know, that I'm, I was afraid of what, you know, people were going to think, etc. And he just stopped me and he's like, Remert, I want you to know whoever they are, are going to sleep tonight. I guarantee <laughs> you, nobody is thinking about you. <laughs> I love that. You know, <laughs> and, and that was one of those light bulb moments for me. Right. And it hit for me in, in a way that that I can hold on to, you know, my conscious mind can hold on to that, you know, when I do feel or did feel, you know, that, that paralysis kind of kicking up or that momentary fear of, oh my gosh, what are they going to think kind of thing? It was like, they're not going to sleep tonight thinking about it. <laughs> or, you know, that momentary, who are they anyway, that, yeah. that I'm so concerned about. Well, the other thing as well is that most people are worried about what other people are thinking of them. They're not worried about, you know what I mean? So (laughs) We're all doing the same thing. Right. That actually is people spend more time worrying about what they Mm -hmm. are wanting or lacking Mm -hmm. or, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. scared of than, than what we are. Years ago, I was so worried about what other people thought of me that I used to try and be good in traffic (laughs) for people. (laughs) <laughs> so I would be driving and I would be worried about yeah. the person behind me or in wherever because I, I forgot to put my indicator on and I'm, what are they going to think? And I remember finding that so funny and thinking, I want to write a book called What Will the Strangers Think? <laughs> you know, like what will the neighbors think? Because it was so absurd because not only would I never see these people again, they couldn't even see me. I'm, I'm just a car. <laughs> and mm-hmm. yet I was worried about what they thought. Mm-hmm. But that, mm-hmm. that was the extent of the unreasonableness of that kind of unconscious program because there's no logic to it. Of yeah. Course. yeah. And, and of course, what we do, the, the basis of what we do, the foundation of what we do and how we help people is, is recognizing kind of the both end. You know, there's mm-hmm. the conscious mm-hmm. mind. And in how we can address things, you know, with the conscious mind, but then also looking at what is there that is the foundation of the the unconscious mind, which is which is driving the fears in the first place. Right. And there's plenty. There's plenty of other videos out there, and we've all watched them, you know, talking about 
you don't want to connect with everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. as a as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as a as a coach, you're not going to reach everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not our goal to reach everybody. And part of you know, for me, coming to that notion or that understanding of yeah rejection mm -hmm. and that fear of what other people are thinking is of course the nature of what it is that we do mm -hmm. and so understanding that you know that's the water we're swimming in mm -hmm. and and i don't want to reach everybody yeah i know i'm not going to reach everybody but the fear that fear is you know it, it it's not helpful we have to get rid of that fear. yeah but i think also for a lot of people i think one of the fears is of people like family what are family and friends going mm. to think of me i think very often that's a stronger mm. fear mm, yeah, than yeah, yeah. the general public or the people that i'm aiming for so for some people it might be yes i know i can help busy mothers or men who have depression or people to lose weight or mm. I know I can help those people but if I put myself out there promoting myself in my business it's my family and my friends who are going to judge me mm -hmm. and so that can sometimes be a really strong fear and again number one does it matter unless you're actually going to get fired or something it's so logically that as I said before that doesn't reduce the fear but it's a start to addressing the logic of it so if they don't think well of you know if they think badly or they judge mm -hmm. as long as they're not going to physically attack me <laughs> or I'm not going to lose a job or something it doesn't matter but number two they're unlikely to be thinking what we think they're thinking you know, the, the fear is great creator, mm -hmm. you know, great imagination to go along yeah. with fear, <laughs> but it's not necessarily reality. And we buy into it like as if we're watching a scary movie and we're not aware that it's mm -hmm. a movie. Mm -hmm. So I think that recognizing that and addressing all of those aspects, well, that's how we changed ourselves, right? Answering the logic. Mm -hmm. the way we have mm -hmm. shared here having focusing on the fun of it so that you've got your cognitive thinking online and then thirdly changing the original unconscious references and then the combination of all that is why we're able to sit here with you today yeah absolutely and I, I, that was a moment <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sorry before you continue though seriously we would not be sitting here talking mm. to you today if yeah. we hadn't done that Okay. Yeah, yeah, Do no, ahead. absolutely. As you were talking, I just wanted to also kind of underscore, yeah, yes, it is the conscious mind and getting ourselves in that positive state. In, but I think for me, you know, that key for me that really changed everything, uh, because, you know, there are other things that we did out there that kind of incrementally kind of leveled things up and moved us past a little bit of the fears. But that biggest key for me was diving in and doing the work to figure out those unconscious mm -hmm. references and changing that yeah. is what in fact changed everything. Yeah. I also wanted to say, you know, of course, let us know in the comments what you feel your biggest fear is. Mm. So when you think about being worried about what others will think, let us know in the comments the kinds of things you're worried about, like who are those others you're thinking of? So are you worried about friends and family? Are you worried about, you know, people you don't know? Are you worried about audience that you're trying to reach? What will they think? Who are they? And what is it you're worried they're going to think? Mm -hmm. So in other words, what, when you think, oh, what are they going to think? What is that? Whatever that aspect is, it would be really interesting. We would love to hear some other people's experiences with that. And also a reminder that we have the free webinar. You can find the link in the description of this video yeah. as well. That'll go into the details of those unconscious references. We're not going into those now because it's a very big topic, but it's covered right. in, the, in the webinar. Thanks for tuning in to Beyond Limits, empowering coaches and entrepreneurs. We hope you found this episode enlightening, inspiring, and helpful. And if you did, please do consider leaving us a five-star review so that others can benefit as well. Subscribe for more inspiration and strategies to fuel your success. For more information on working with us, visit our website, theremertmethod.com. That's Remert, R-E-M-M-E-R-T, theremertmethod.com. Sending you love and encouragement. Until next time.